14 archives there, so you understand exactly how he looks at the market every day and exactly how he rides the Chapman wave. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Very good. So this is going to be fascinating. You've got another couple of days to go. We'll wrap up the month of June. Fast, and huh? <laughs> I, yeah, I just... Oh. I know. So wasn't, wasn't it just January? <laughs> Seriously, man. Just Seriously. 24. As you get older, just time just flies. Yeah, that toilet quicker. paper roll is getting smaller and smaller, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. So this is going to be interesting because for quite a while, I've been talking about how the weekly charts remain strong. And that even though on the short term, I've got all these other techniques that I'm looking at that, that are giving me uh, kind of just a sense of what's happening. And, and so far, it's been kind of correct. It's those weekly charts. And I thought, just I'll take a moment here just to show you what I'm talking about. Look, in the middle chart, that's the weekly. So on the left is the daily chart of the Dow. Okay. The middle is the weekly chart. On the right is the monthly chart. I'll get rid of the 120. We don't need it right now. So this 120 minutes, so this weekly chart right here, you see this pattern with the cup formation. So there's the pattern that I talk about within a rectangle. There are a number of, I actually have webinars on the different rectangles. There's a narrow rectangle, there's a large rectangle, there's a lopsided rectangle where the rectangle is uh, set, but the low um, is quite quick, and then it starts working its way to the upside. So there are a bunch of things that I look at, and most of the time what I'm looking at is if there is a cup formation, there's a chance that you can go just under, right on, or just above the previous high. And then if it starts to pull back, when you break the halfway marker of the rectangle, you've got to be careful. Well, lo and behold, we've done everything here. So the Dow, uh, back in March, made a high. Let me just check it out. It was 39889 It pulls back. And what does it do? It goes, it sneaks to a slightly higher high in the weekly chart to 40077 40, but it pulls back and it holds the left side low. And one of the things that I do, and here again, I've done um, webinars on this. I talk about it all the time with, with, for my subscribers. We know that this is really important to me. That nine period moving average, and that's this green line. I think you can see it right there, the little green line yes. above the black line. That's the nine period moving average over the 14. And even with each of these dips where the Dow weekly chart closed underneath the 14 period moving average, so often the green line remained positive. And look, even here, the green line on this last move three weeks ago and then two weeks ago, the Dow went underneath the uh, 14 period moving average and it still remained green. So what I said is the weekly charts based on my 914, not on the MACD or the stochastic or anything else, but on the 914s, it's, I call it the indicator of last resort because it really can keep you in the in the longer term trade just longer than you would think. So look at this; it's still looking very positive. The week, the daily chart, that's something very different. But now I want you to go to uh, the other indices and show you what's going on and the reason why. Even though we do have short positions, act we have a short position in the S and P. Um, we, I, I put the stop in so that we won't take a loss. Uh, we'll see if this is going to work out the same as the, with the SMH as a semiconductor index. But look at the weekly chart, how high it is above the green line, which is the nine period moving average, and how the green line is way above the 14 period moving average. So I have to respect that. So on a very short term basis, I'm anticipating that this digestive phase is going to go on a little bit. You'll see the QQQ. It's pulled back a little bit more than the others. It's gone from 486.86 um, to the low yesterday in the 473 area. It's a little bit higher today, but on the daily chart, nine is over the 14. And in the weekly chart, the price is way over the nine. The, way, the nine is way over the 14. And if I go to the IWM, that's the Russell 2000, that's a little different because it's been making lower lows in the daily. But even on the weekly chart, even though it's been kind of weak, look, the nine right here, if I can show you right there is just above the, the 14, so it's green. So even with my emotions saying, you know, we're rotating, we had that sell-off in the Dow, and then the Dow started running, and then we had the sell-off in the uh, other indices. Look at the SMHs, this is the sharpest decline, the same as I've had in quite a while. 
is even sharper than the one in, in um, May. It goes all the way back to the one that was in April, and that, that actually was a very big one, going to, uh, down to 198. So at this point, we're fortunate because we shorted the day after the top, but at the same time, I've made the stop very, very tight so that we, we, we have the three times short. We have a position there. But most importantly, this is the one that on the daily basis says, wow, that's a sharp pullback, Two, 279 to, um, to the low, even today's of 255. That's quite, quite a deep. And yet that nine is still positive. And look at the weekly chart. So I think this is a whole process that we've got to be ready for that. Um, we're rotating through the different sectors. How the if the if for the semis to really become negative, they have to close in the next, I'd say, three to five sessions below uh, 250, I'd say 254. And uh, they're right now at 260. So it's a process that's going on. And I, I spoke to you a couple of weeks ago. I said Microsoft has this pattern. I call it the stalk leg formation. And that the weekly chart says that it should go way above that peak D. And after that, when it pulls back, that's going to be significant. So here we are at peak C in the daily chart at 452.75. I should mention we are long from 338. It's trading right now at 450. Huge. But... Yeah, it's nice, but but the thing is, here again, look at the divergence. This is not, look the semiconductors pull back sharply, and yet you've got a couple of these, you know, the the mega sevens. They're holding well. I mean, this is this is good action. So I'm anticipating that it could go to a leg D above 452.75 in the next day or two, and at that point, I've got to be careful. Then I'm going to say, does this weekly chart? which says that you've got this, I call this a leg, a long leg up. That's the pattern right here. Long leg, oval body that goes in time, but it must look like an oval, and this looks like an oval, goes to a peak D or an E, and then it pops above the arch, and that's the neck. When the neck starts coming down, that becomes the beak. That's the one that has either, that's the one that you've got to measure. How deep is that beak? And we haven't started the turnaround yet. So Microsoft, in a way, is a kind of a, for me, it's just, it encapsulates, it's got the Dow, it's got the S&P, it's got the uh, yes. uh, QQQ, it's got the semi, right. it, not semis, but it's got the XLK. So I'm watching this very closely. So it's a process. We'll see what happens. <laughs> the day is young. Anything can happen between now and four o'clock. But um, so far, the, the semis are still saying, Yep, they're taking a bit of a breather, and I think that's really important. And folks, very easy to get Basil's newsletter, TFNN, newsletters, Right, left-hand side, opening call. Baz, have a great one, safe one. We look forward to show tomorrow. Thank you, Tom. You too. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.